Loving brothers and sisters, yes, we are here in the presence of Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming to us and inviting us to this beautiful service. Today, the June 14th, this beautiful Sunday that the Lord has come and has made a new for all of us. Let us come. To God our Father and the Son Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. Psalm 100 Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gate with thanksgiving and His court with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Okay, now let us sing the hymn 286, Come Into My Heart, Bless Jesus. Come into my heart, bless Jesus, come in to my heart I pray my soul is so troubled and weary come into my heart today into my heart into my heart come into my heart Lord Jesus come in today Come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, blessed Jesus. I need thee, we weigh. The burden of sin is so heavy. Come into my heart to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, blessed Jesus. And take all my guilt away. Then spread Let's all stand in thy presence when breaks thine eternal day. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today. Jesus, oh, cleanse and all in me in soul. Fill me with thy wonderful spirit. Come in and take full control. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart. Oh Lord Jesus, come in to 
today. Come in to stay. Come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence today. You are welcoming us to, to the place of the worship service. This beautiful time and beautiful place that you make holy for all of us to worship you. This is the blessings that we have to hear your voice, to speak to you as the prayer. And that we praise you, the Lord, with a melody that is coming from our heart. O oh, Jesus, let us kneel down to you as you are cleansing our sins so that we are coming from the bondage of the sin, of the death. Now this is the beautiful time that we are thinking of you, your blessings. You are coming to us, healing us, teaching us what is the kingdom of God and also leading to the kingdom of God as you died upon the cross, cleansing all the sins of us. And also we remember your commandment that we go to the end of the earth to share these beautiful messages to all the people, unreached. Oh God, let us all worship you, even though we are living in the trouble, the time of the coronavirus, and the time of racial discriminations, and all the riots we see here today, experience. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we have no hope at all here in this world without you, except you. Only the hope is there in the kingdom of heaven. However, we want your will be done on earth as it is done in the heaven. So please, let us all the church come together, open the gates again, and welcome the people to worship you, so that we all praise the Lord, the Lord of healing, the Lord of the saving, the Lord of blessings. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom to all of you, my brothers and sisters. There in Hoopa and the Avenues in San Francisco. And also all the brothers and sisters of Golden Gate. And all the people, loving Christians, children of God, everywhere in all of the world. We are blessed because we can worship God, because we can call God the Father. Thank you. And why don't you share your greetings and uh, your shalom to everyone, if not seen, however, we see each other by the Spirit. Amen. Uh, actually, we plan to have an uh, uh, opening uh, uh, June 21st, next Sunday, uh, for uh, Sunday 11 o'clock Korean service. but. Uh, unfortunately, one of uh, the Hispanic churches renting us the building uh, has been found positive to coronavirus, so that we, uh, the session, uh, agreed to uh, not to open until the next month. So, specific the schedule will be made and uh, let uh, you know that. But pray for the person in the, the positive uh, and also the family and all the people uh, still waiting for uh, coming to the church. So let us all pray for this. And also pray for the people who are still suffering by the sickness or some problems, issues. So let us all care this time, the time of the trouble. Let all uh, come to Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, today's scripture God is giving us today is the Mark chapter 7. Verses 1 to 23. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. 
And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and the pots and the copper vessels and the dining coaches. And the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophecy of your hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of man. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of man. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Gorvan, that is given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of person are what defile him. And we hand, had he entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach? and is expelled. Thus he declared all food clean, and he said, What comes out of person is what defies him. Uh, for from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thought, uh, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, uh, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, and all these evil comes from within, and they defile a person. Amen. Today the theme of my preaching is love. We all need to have love. As we love God, we also need to love our brothers and sisters, just as we do ourselves. Today, let me give you brief uh, descriptions of my preaching today. Number one, Pharisees and the scribes to challenge the Jesus Christ. The people without love now are now criticizing Jesus, the love itself. Like the darkness criticized the light. Number two, uh, they criticized about the disciples of Jesus because they were eating without washing their hands. They thought by the, uh, by the eating the food without washing their hands, they were defiled. They were defiled because, but they were clean. They themselves are clean, but the disciples of Jesus not that clean. So they are now criticizing. This attitude comes from the lack of love. If they are not that clean, then why don't you? Why don't you guys go and help them be clean? But they didn't do that. But to stand aside, criticized because of the lack of God, lack of love. And now we find Jesus Christ. Number three, Jesus answer. Number one, Jesus said, Your tradition of the elders is standing against the word of God. And uh, you keep the uh, traditions of the elders and you reject the word of God. 
And number two, Jesus spoke about what makes a person defiled. And Jesus said, nothing coming from outside because he goes into the uh, stomach and go out, not into the heart. But something come out, coming out of a heart will defile the person. So we'll talk about this. And Jesus mentioned about this, that the people who are criticizing the disciples of Jesus and Jesus himself are defiled already, even though they are eating and wash their hands, because things coming out of no good things, no good ideas, like uh, you know, lack of love. And uh, the next one I would uh, speak about is, the kingdom of God is not something to eat. It is something about how to love one another deeply. And also, in understanding the word of God, that the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, even though they were teachers of the law, they were not understanding the word of God because they didn't meet Jesus personally, who is the word of God, who was with God, and who was God. Jesus came to us. So unless we meet Jesus personally, we cannot get into the truth of the word of God. So the case of the Pharisees and the scribes. And also, uh, it is the love that Jesus Christ be sent by God. God sent Jesus Christ because God loved the, uh, the world this much. So this is the conclusion of my sermon today. Number one, Pharisees and the scribes came to Jesus, criticizing the disciples of Jesus and also Jesus himself because they were uh, not living uh, uh, with the love. Without the love, they are now criticizing Jesus. They are challenging Jesus. This is not the only one. Previously, they challenged Jesus for Jesus uh, carrying his disciples who were uh, eating uh, uh, you know, at the, on the Sabbath as they were uh, you know, at the hand harvesting uh, work in the, uh, in the field. So they criticized the disciples of Jesus of the work eating, making the grinding uh, uh, the grain. They didn't care about the disciples of Jesus who were poor and hungry. They didn't care about their hunger, but they criticized because according to their understanding of the Sabbath. Misunderstanding, however. Now, uh, at this time also, they came to Jesus and criticizing and challenging. This time, it is about the way of cleansing. Finally, they will not stop this. Continually, they will challenge Jesus up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The reason why they are criticizing now, right now, is because they were defiled because of their un, uh, not washed hands they are eating with. So the food be defiled, and uh, because they eat that, they themselves are defiled according to their judgment. And they came to Jesus, and Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with a defiled hand? Therefore, what they are pointing out is, the food is defiled by unwashed hands, so that uh, they themselves were defiled. And uh, uh, evidence of that judgment is not coming from the Bible, for, but from the tradition of the elders. There is nowhere we find in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that the, you need to wash your hands before you are eating. Only one, t uh, one case we find is when the priest, when they come into the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, for the service. It is written in uh, Exodus chapter 30, 17 to 21. The Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze and with a stand of bronze for washing, 
you shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet. And when they go into the tent of meeting, when they come near to altar to minister, to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their uh, with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. In the time of Jesus, most of the Jews, especially the Pharisees and sacrificed, practiced this one. This is not, their practice was not according to the Bible, which was confined to the priest. But according to the elders' tradition, the elders interpreted the Bible according to their own interest. So, interpretation is not that cor correct. However, because they were elders, because they were in the society ruled by the elders, People followed him, followed the way of the elders. Yes, it may be good for people to wash their hands before eating. However, it is not a religious requirement. It is not a matter of criticism, but recommendation. Better one is to wash your hands for your uh, health, for your uh, 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 ways of uh, uh, attitude. Recommendation not the matter of the criticism. Especially the people who are poor, by the time of, uh, by the place of uh, 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 not much water there, it is, po it is not possible for wash their hands and their feet that often. So this time the, uh, the rich people, the scribes and the Pharisees are criticizing the poor people. Better one is not to criticize, but to provide the water to wash. However, they didn't do that because they didn't have the love. Now let's get into Jesus in his answer. Jesus answered two kinds. Number one, Jesus pointed out how, according to their tradition, they violate the law of God. So now they are criticizing disciples of Jesus according to, based upon the traditions of the elders. However, Jesus is pointing out, come on, you guys are violating the word of God according to your elders' traditions. And number two, Jesus said in public and in private settings that what defies human being is not something coming out into the person like the foot by the unwashed hands, but something coming out of humans, those bad ideas and the sexual immoralities, those coming out of human beings will defy the person. Let's talk about the first case, the tradition of elders against the word of God. The tradition of elders is what the elders coming into and they set regulations, made the doctrines. Yes, some are useful, however, but uh, some are violating the teaching, teachings of the law against God. For example, Jesus is quoting Isaiah 29, 13. And he said to them, well did Isaiah prophecy of the hypocrites, as it is written, The people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandment of man. We all know that the lip service, only the lips, not by the heart. And Jesus is now is pointing that you leave the command of God and hold to the tradition of man. And Jesus said that you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. 
In order to establish your tradition, you are having fine way of rejecting the commandment of God. So one example Jesus is pointing is Korvan. This transliteration of Hebrew, Korvan, means the offering. Offering to God especially, approaching to God and offer. And uh, they said that, they said, when they say offering to, korvan to their parents, this is korvan, and then they are exempt, honoring their parents, and taking care of their parents. They thought, taught like that, which is according to the tradition of elders. So point is, either God to parents, and they chose God. So when they offer to God, parents honoring the parents be exempt will be uh, uh, except they'll be uh, they have no requirement uh, no need to honor their parents that is the way they taught however jesus is pointing that come on that's not the true the bible said the word of god god gave through moses that honor your father and mother that the, your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving to you. So honor your parents, which is the commandment of God. And now, according to the teachings of the traditions of the elders, people violate that order of God. So that is the violation of the law of God, the word of God. So Jesus is pointing out what is hidden in the heart of the Pharisees and the scribes. The hidden things are now is revealed by Jesus Christ. Jesus is now taking the hidden things out, which is bad ideas, not to honor their parents in the name of Korvan or, or honoring God. So God is used for them and the excuse not to honor their parents what a vicious things coming out of themselves. So point is declared, as Jesus mentioned, to honor God, to love God is one thing, and you honor and love your parents is the other. You need to take both. Not either either, but either or, but both and you have to take. Because as you violate the one, out of many, you are violating the word of God. And now Jesus is teaching in public to call the people again and spoke that what defiled the human being. Jesus spoke very clearly to the people that this is a parable. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. Very interesting point. This is standing against the teaching of the elders and also the standings of the Pharisees and the scribes. But what makes the person defiled? Jesus said, but the things that come out of a person, uh, what defile him? So Jesus is now revealing the hidden purposes. And Jesus uh, uh, revealing that is, because Jesus wanted to give the chance for them to understand who they are correctly and what is the will of God is correctly so that they kneel down and repent their sins and forgiveness will be given to them. No matter what, it is hidden or not, things inside of the person will defile the person. However, the things inside will eventually come out. How can human beings hide that forever, if not temporarily? And especially when they use God, the name of God, the law of God, the Quran, for the sake of their very vicious interest, not to honor their parents. This is standing against God, the sin, critical sin. 
you know what? Eating the food without washing their hands will not defile the disciples of Jesus. And everything be clean as people washing them, watching them, eating without the washing their hands. But things is, the people, the Pharisees and the scribes, they commit all the sins. However, things were hidden. But by the Jesus, who is the light of the world, their sins are now revealed. Most critical thing is they are standing against God based upon their tradition, tradition, human tradition, based upon their interest. That's the sin. Now when Jesus came into the house, disciples came and asked about the parables. This pattern we find before and after when Jesus spoke in public about the kingdom of heaven using the parables disciples not fully understood they came into Jesus and asked could you speak us about the meaning of the parable the same thing they asked Jesus and Jesus said what comes out of a person is what defies him for whom within out of the heart of man come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, fullness. All these evil comes, come from within and they defile a person. Let's just think about one by one. Evil thoughts. Now, yes, they, the Pharisees and scribes, had evil thoughts. Eventually, when they spoke about the traditions and they talk about the law of God, however, their thoughts were to criticize disciples of Jesus, poor people, and also eventually they wanted to kill Jesus, the righteous one, the holy one, the only son of God. So, evil thoughts now is. Uh, 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 divide, uh, revealed coming out from them which defile them and the next one is sexual immorality and theft and the murder and adultery and the coveting wickedness deceit sensuality envy slander pride foolishness they all cover everything into one point foolishness Jesus spoke in public how they violate the teaching of God with their traditions. And also Jesus spoke in publicly what make a person defiled is, is not something coming out of, coming uh, uh, into him, but it is instead which is coming out of. Jesus spoke that, but they didn't understand that. They had the foolishness out of their pride and out of their envy and also they were men of slander they were men of deceit so we all find these in the in the uh, characters of the Pharisees and the scribes now we we may go to Galatians chapter 5 where Paul wrote about the fruits of the flesh some 15 or 16 things sexual immorality and impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger uh, rivalries and uh, dissensions divisions envy drunkenness orgies and things like these we find this. All those were about the same as Jesus spoke, which come out of uh, human beings to make defiled. So Paul, uh, who learned from Jesus, had this as the fruit of the flesh. Yes, all the, not all the traditions of humans are not that wicked. wicked. However, point is, if they are standing against God, 
they are wicked. So we need to not to follow the traditions of humans, but to follow the word of God, conforming daily, every day, changing our lives totally according to the light of Jesus Christ, the word of God. So now let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that famous verse. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. But the thing is, this is, a lack, this, is, this is not found in the hearts of the Pharisees and scribes. They were fully conformed of their tradition so their hearts be like a, you know, hardened like the stone. Even in front of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, the Savior, they didn't open their hearts. They insisted their righteousness. What a foolishness they had. When I was in elementary school, uh, when I was at Sunday school in Korea, I had, uh, uh, you know what? learn a picture of uh, the heart of Mr. Uh, uh, Boy Park, a, a, ch a child park. And there is a, a, a child and a big heart is uh, uh, written and inside of the heart, there are many uh, bad things written, uh, uh, draw, drawn. So uh, this, uh, that uh, picture showed us what are we have inside of the heart. Now we all need that. We need to understand we all, except without any exception, have those bad things like Jesus mentioned inside of us. Thing is clear. We all need to confess we are sinners. And we all ask Jesus Christ to help us. And then Holy Spirit will come and help us to control this. Do you remember what God spoke to Cain before he killed his brother. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. The sin is crouching like an animal before attacking, ready for the attack. But you need to control the sin. If not, it will control you. Control or you will be controlled. This is what God warned before the killing of the brother. But he didn't control the sin. We may have a question. How a person like Cain can control that sin? Yes, there is a way. He need to ask of God. Oh God, you warned me this. Now I have that desire. Please come and help me. And why God did not come to him help? The point is this. We all need to ask the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come and remove all the uh, fruit of the flesh. And Jesus spoke this. Luke chapter 11 verse 9 and 10. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Some other places you will find this. The reason, uh, the things you may not get is the reason because you didn't ask. Even though you asked, you had thought about that. Now point is, you seek and ask and knock and it will be given. Because God is good Father. Jesus continued, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So Luke is pointing out the Holy Spirit that God is holding, ready to give us when we ask, seek, and knock. Holy Spirit is the one who will be given to everyone who asks. Did you remember 
what Jesus commanded his disciples. You stay here in Jerusalem and pray as you are waiting for the Holy Spirit. And then, not long after you will get the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was ascending, he commanded only 10 days. When they prayed, they got the Holy Spirit in the Pentecost. God is loving us so that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ. And also Jesus Christ, through him, the Holy Spirit will come from our Father God. We all are sinners. Things we have inside of us are the same. The things very, you know what, that make us defiled. Bad things. Wicked ones. However, when the Holy Spirit comes, we will give, He will give us the fruit of this. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is this. Love, joy, and peace, patience kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against such things, there is no law. Yes, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. All those are not found, nothing within us. We have nothing of that, of those. But all those will come outside of us with the Holy Spirit so so that we confess that oh God we are sinners deserving uh, no goodness at all only deserving the death however but we ask you your favor oh God please send us the Holy Spirit point is this something coming out of us will not defile us Jesus said all food are clean. Point is clear. Them something coming out of like the uh, the uh, the deceit and the bad thoughts ideas that Pharisees and the scribes had hidden inside of them as they approached to Jesus, pretending they be uh, the teachers of the law, uh, obeying the law of God, or word of God faithfully, which is not that correct. Point is this one. And let's talk about number four, Jesus' teaching of the kingdom of heaven, which is not what is to eat, what is to drink. Romans chapter 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and the peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking. Point is, matter of eating or drinking. It's nothing about what is kingdom of God. So point is, people are eating good food, clean food. They are not clear automatically, accordingly. But thing is, we all are need to come to Jesus, who is the kingdom of God, through whom we all can go to the kingdom, uh, to Father God. So, He is the way and the truth. Through Him, we go to the kingdom of God. Uh, people uh, tend to have, uh, you know what, uh, prejudices, uh, judging people by what they eat. This is an unhappy thing, as the scribes and the Pharisees did. When I was in college, we had three kinds of uh, restaurants in a college campus. One is for the students. The other one is somewhat, I don't know who they go, but uh, two times or three times expensive, expensive small, uh, uh, gorgeous restaurant. And the third one for the faculty. Of course, and the uh, student, uh, the restaurant, we find different kinds of different prices. Uh, <clears throat> I liked, uh, you know, at, uh, fish cake, uh, the soup, but which was uh, 450 uh, one today, like uh, 
some uh, three uh, three point five dollars something, but very hard for me to get. The point is, no matter what you eat, good students are not in what uh, they are found by what they eat. Thing is, how they ask God what they want, what they pursue, to where they go, what is their goal. So goodness that makes him clean and holy is not inside but outside the God who is coming to us. And the point is, what we come out, all those are visual things are to be controlled. How can we do that? We cannot. Only Holy Spirit can help us. Now, number five, we all need to learn the Word of God, which is actually through Jesus Christ. If not Jesus Christ, we may not get into the understanding of the truth. Even though they were experts, yes, the scribes and the uh, Pharisees, experts of the Word of God, however, they were not knowing who Jesus is that is standing next to them. So that they couldn't get into the truth, the essence of the teachings of the law. Again, I quote what Jesus said. He said to them, Well did Isaiah prophecy of your hypocrites, as it is written, The people honors me with their lips, but, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines of the commandment of man. If not meeting Jesus Christ, you cannot come into the world exactly, because Jesus is the word of God. Who was God with God? Who was God? And who came to us as incarnation? So we all need to meet Jesus personally, and then Jesus is the one who teaches us. The word of God clearly, now the, like the two disciples coming from Jerusalem to Emmanuel, walking seven miles a, a distance with Jesus. They were taught by the word of God and their heart were burning by uh, the teaching of Jesus Christ. So we need Jesus. And also in Jesus we find how to love God because Jesus is the love of God as God loved us, us. He sent one and only Son, Jesus Christ. So all we need to know that God is loving us and uh, it is Jesus Christ that uh, we find how much God is loving us. And in teaching of Jesus, we know how to love one another. Brothers and sisters, look at this. All we are the sinners. So differentiating or dividing a people from one group to the other. The people can wash their hands and cannot wash their hands. Eating uh, uh, something, uh, you know, the clean or unclean. That's not the way of God. That is not the wolf of God. Jesus Christ is calling everyone the sinners. No exception. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all who labor and are heaven heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me all. No exception. Everyone come to me. All we are the sinners, the same. So we all need to be cleansed the sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the Pharisees and scribes challenged Jesus. However, Jesus gave them lessons in public. In public 14 to 16, Jesus said, what makes defiled human beings? And if they understood it correctly, they might have been their blessings. And in private settings, he taught his disciples what are the details, what are the details, things inside of the human heart. And uh, when we hear uh, humans' wordings, speeches, 
we feel pretty much uh, uncomfortable because humans are pretty much limited by their um, uh, ways of experience and the learning and thought. But the Word of God gives us unlimited scope of the areas that uh, we go and uh, the Word of God is uh, teaching us, leading us to the heart of God. And uh, ultimately speaking, the Word of God tells us who we are as clean as we see face to face. And, and also the Word of God tells us who God is, how much He loves us. The last point I'm going to share with you is the Jesus Christ who is with us today. As we understand this, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Do we have understand? As Jesus is telling His disciples, are you also not having that understanding yet? And He started His explanation of the parable He spoke in public. So now I tell you, I challenge you, brothers and sisters, are you still not in understanding of what Jesus is telling, teaching? Accept Jesus Christ and know that it is love, not the criticism. It is to, com it is com uh, com to have compassion, not to separate yourselves from the people to make another group. And it is not to trust yourselves, not to trust any human beings, not to follow, not to honor, not to idolize human beings. That is not the case we find today in the teaching of Jesus Christ. All humans are the same, the sinners. So instead of honoring, instead of idolizing humans, but look at Jesus Christ and follow Him. And they themselves idolized their elders, their traditions. They were, you know what, they were bound to their past, the traditions. But Jesus is now challenging them to come out. As Romans chapter 12, 2 says, transformed by the will of God. Thinking about that, what is the perfect, what is the good will of God? And come out and reformed. The church is reformed. And also reforming churches. How about, how about all the individuals? The same thing we find. Yesterday, we were like a child. We give up that today because we are now grew up. We we'll go to the nearer to the cross each day, each moment, to the kingdom of heaven each day. What he found, what he find in, in the world is discriminations racial, social discriminations, and uh, stratifications of the societies. Things we find like a waste, like a garbages, like a things are rotten. Still do you trust in human beings? Still do you love the world this much? No, not at all. We have the kingdom of God. Yes, of course. In this world living, we have responsibilities as God is sending Jesus Christ and loving this world so that we find, we need to find the shade of foreshadowing of the kingdom of God, even here in this world, which is the church. The church is what Jesus established as the foreshadowing of the kingdom of God. In church, we experience the life of the kingdom of God, if not perfect, but as foreshadowing. It's the dream we may dream in the church. This is why we are loving church this much, brothers and sisters. Yes, Jesus is the head of the church. Let's come all to Jesus Christ to make the body of Christ Jesus, which is the church. And let us worship God. Brothers and sisters, yes, you are there in Hopa Valley, and you are there in avenues, and in Daily City San Francisco, and all over the world. But we are one in Christ Jesus forming the church, the body of Christ Jesus. Let us not to trust ourselves who are full of those wicked things coming out all the days. We deserve death. 
But God is loving us this much. So he sent Jesus Christ to us. Let us pray to the God who is loving us this much. Father God, thank you for your loving us. Even though we deserve the death out of the sins we committed, out of all the bad things we are holding in our heart, hiding, pretending to be good, however, we are dead, vicious, criticizing, dividing, and separating all the time. Self-justification all the time. Criticizing, rejecting the teaching of Jesus Christ. Oh God, please forgive us. Now we are surrendering. God, please come and send us the Holy Spirit. Possess us so that we be the true Christians. Living as we are denying ourselves. We follow you, Jesus Christ, as we are carrying our own crisis. Yes, the troubles, the issues we have live, we live each day are those crosses we need to carry and bring those to your feet, Jesus Christ. And where, as you called us, you will give us the rest. We want that. We love that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this time we are now uh, offering Back to God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your giving this beautiful time for the offering. We confess everything good come from you. So now we are returning back to you. The offering, the tithe, and thanksgiving, and the mission offering, and all goodness. Now we are returning to you, your hands. And uh, as you extend the ministry, the church, and the planting the churches all over the world, please use us as we are standing now this time. Use us, our strength, and our wisdom, and our goodness, even though, though they are almost nothing. However, we want to dedicate ourselves, leaving nothing behind us. Jesus Christ, teach us our children, how to devote themselves, living not for themselves, but for Jesus Christ. Caring other people, loving other people, as Jesus taught us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now let us stand up and then let us uh, uh, sing the hymnal 185 together. Yes, Holy Spirit has come to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, spread the tidings Whatever man is found Whatever human heart And human most is Let every Christian Proclaim thy joyful sound O speak Your has come the comfort has come, the comfort has come, the Holy Ghost and me, the Father present me. Oh, spread the tidings, every man is found, the comfort has come, no the great King of Kings. Wheeling in his wing, turn every captive soul of full deliverance brings. And though the wicked, the song a trumpet ring, though come for to has come, the comfort has come, the comfort has come. The Holy Ghost from me, the Father promised me. Oh, spread the tidings, let every man is found. The comfort has come. Oh, bundle of me, how shall this tongue of mine to wandering itself? 
moment is fine that I, a child of God, should in this image shine the comforter has come. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The Father. Man is found the comforter has come. One more time, the comfort has come. The comfort has come. The comfort has come. The hand it goes in the Father's presence. Oh, spread the tidings. Wherever man is found the comfort. For tall has come without music. Let's one more time. The comfort has come. The comfort has come. The healing goes from him. The Father's promise given. Oh, spread the tidings on where every man is found. The comfort has come. Hallelujah! Amen! Let's pray. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the Holy Spirit be with you from this time to forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The comforter has come to you. Amen.